Oh. Okay. Maybe a little less trouble. You can turn me down a little bit here if you got to. It's okay. Just squeal on a little bit. Can I talk to you guys for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is it cool with you? <laughs> it's like, no! Please! The scary man with the pathetic beard wants to talk to me. Pathetic or prophetic? Uh, that's the only reason why he would keep him around. <laughs> he flatters me. I'm just kidding, man. I want to talk to you guys about my Jesus tonight. Is that okay? How many Jesus freaks do we have out there tonight? Man, I ain't nothing special. I'm just a Jesus junkie through and through. I guarantee it, man. <laughs> there ain't nothing better than Jesus. I promise you that. <laughs> so, it's funny. I've been contemplating for this show what I'm going to say, what I'm going to get together and try to prepare, man, or, or whatever, you know what I mean? So I felt like God had a word for you guys. And I felt that in my spirit. So I went after it hard to, to see, you know, what, what I could dig up in, in my sword. There you go. Anybody else get into this thing? Let me tell you something. This thing's your life, man. You better be in it. We always talk all the time about, uh, there's in Star Wars, actually, it's funny, I'm bringing this back to this, but Star Wars episode two, Obi-Wan Kenobi says, this weapon is your life. <laughs> this weapon is your life, friend. Let me tell you something. This weapon is your life. The entrance of his word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. It'll give you understanding of stuff that, that you never thought you could understand. It'll bring light into situations that you thought could never be lit up, man. The Word of God is amazing. And you cannot make it through this life without it, just like you can't without the Holy Spirit, without Jesus, man. Let me tell you something. So, back on back on subject. I, 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 last night, I'm laying in, in the RV, I'm laying in the bed, I'm just thinking, man, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to talk about? God, I know you have a word for these people. And man, I didn't get nothing. So today, man, I dug, I dug, I dug. What? What word, what amazing thing can I say to these people to show them your glory, God? What can I do to show them your glory? I didn't get nothing, man. I didn't get nothing. And when Theity was playing, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and he said, Beauty. The word I have tonight for you guys is beauty. Beauty. I don't care what you think. I don't care what people have told you. You have worth. You're beautiful, man. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalms 139, man. He says he has more thoughts about you than the sands of the seashore. Friend, he's our father. And he only has good gifts for you. I, I don't care about the junk that, you know, well, he took my grandma. He took my this, he took my that. Man, God's not up there. He's not a hit man. He's not popping people off, dude. Right. Right. That ain't God. That's not his character, man. The father comes with good gifts for his children, man. Good gifts. Good gifts. I said, devil, man. He comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Right. So I want to talk to you guys about is your worth, man. You're worth so much that all of heaven went bankrupt for you. When Jesus came and he bled on the cross for you. And he didn't just come on the cross. He didn't come to just to just die and, and take your place and take your sin. Yeah, he did that, man. But he came to show you what a life lived as a man with the Holy Spirit could do. And he walked in such a way that we can walk like. He says it himself, you'll do these things in greater, man. Yeah. It's hard, man, but it's not complicated. We can't walk like Jesus. We can't walk like Jesus. This, this tour that we're on is called the beauty of grace, man. I love it so much. Grace is an amazing gift. It really is, dude. Grace empowers us to walk like Jesus does. That's true grace. Don't get it twisted, man. 
It's not a license to sin. It's not a license to do whatever you want. Jesus never did that stuff, dude. It's a license to live like Jesus. It's a license to walk in such a way that he walked, man. Let me tell you about a little story. We got a little bit of time, so I felt like God wanted me to bring it this way. But there's a story in the Bible, man. I believe it's in John 8. And the Pharisees and the scribes, they, 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 they catch this woman in the act of adultery. And uh, personally, I think it was a setup, man. But to trap Jesus, they bring him to her. They bring her to him. And they say, teacher, what do you say we should do? The law of Moses says that we should stone such a woman. So they're asking Jesus. And Jesus does something pretty amazing, man. He stoops down. Puts his finger in the dirt. He starts writing something. I don't know, man. I've heard my whole life what it could be. Possibly the Ten Commandments. It could be the uh, sins of everybody around. Uh, what they've done. Who knows, man. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that when our Creator puts His hands in the dirt, something amazing always happens. Yeah. Something amazing always happens. Yeah. A chapter later, there's a man who is blind, and Jesus puts His hands in the dirt. And He spits on it and anoints it. He anoints the man's eyes, and the man washes, and the man can see. In the beginning, God pulled man out of the dirt and breathed into him. Something always Amazing, something beautiful always happens when our Creator, when Jesus Christ, puts His hands in the dirt. Let me tell you something. You ain't too dirty for Jesus, man. You ain't too dirty for Him to for Him to flip the script and put His hands in your dirt. So they keep asking, and Jesus is still still on the ground, right in the dirt. And He says something pretty awesome. Without sin, throw the first stone. And little by little, they all start dropping their stones. Him being the only one, him being the only one who had the right to throw the stone, he didn't condemn her, man. Right. I'm here to tell you today, friend, he doesn't condemn you either. He doesn't condemn you either, man. He came so that you could have life and you could have life more abundantly. Life more abundantly. That's what this is all about, man. Yeah. It's not a, pro, uh, a proclamation of faith and, and, and then you, you proclaim Jesus, but, but you still live the same in the same crumb that you started with, man. It's life more abundant, even here on earth. It's not so that you can live like hell to make it to heaven, man. No, man. So he came and he died for you so that heaven can live inside of you. That you can show Jesus off everywhere you go, and everywhere you walk, and everywhere you talk. The people see Jesus Christ. Come on, friends. Come on. We have, we have a responsibility as the church to step up and to love people, dude. Right, right. To love people, man. I don't know what it is, but I feel like somebody here. forgotten their worth and has listened to the lies of the stranger you are beautiful you are beautiful man you're precious don't listen to that crap the son of God you're beautiful there's nobody like you God has amazing things just for you you don't have to be up here you don't have to be preaching man you don't have to be on the mission field dude just live it out every day man I'm telling you, man, some of the best opportunities I ever have to minister are nowhere near a platform. Yeah. It's just from life lived. Yep, that's right. Just being in Jesus, man. There we go. I want to tell you guys, we love you guys so much. We're honored to be here. And if we don't know you guys personally, I mean, come on. Like, look around you guys. Like, we should all know each other personally before the night's over. Like, seriously. <laughs> We love you guys so much, and I just can't leave anywhere. I can't go anywhere without talking about my Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I want to pray for you guys, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you so much for these people, Lord. I thank you so much for this this radical, crazy group of people that you brought together in this one room, under this one roof, and these planet shakers, God. Lord, I pray that. 
a sense of worth would be released, Lord, that they, they can know how much they're worth to you, God. That you were, they, were, they were worth so much that you would come, that you would die for them, Lord, so that they can live with you, Jesus, and live for you. God, I just thank you so much for these people, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come here and spread your gospel, Jesus. If there's anybody here tonight that says, man, Travis, bro, I just, I don't feel like I'm worth anything, man. I don't feel beautiful. I feel like, I feel like I'm trash, man. I feel like I'm yesterday's news and I'm used up. But I want this Jesus you're talking about. And I want to feel this worth that you're talking about. If that's you, raise your hand. This is for you. Come on. We're here to pray for you. We're here to love you. Is there anybody tonight? Anybody? We love you guys so much. We're chaotic resentment. Silverside's going to come up next and they're going to melt your faces off, dude.